Hello, my name is Felda Blythe. Once again, there has been a change in scenery. This is a little bit of a chatty, clean my crafting room with me. As you can see, it's in complete chaos. I'm gonna talk a bit about my practice. Also, there's like a crazy storm outside, so if you hear wind and thunder and whatever, just it's fine. I wanted to talk a bit about my practice, how my practice has changed. I wanna be transparent and open. Sometimes get the suspicion that people have this impression of my practice. So my goal in this crafting room right now is to sort all my fabrics. My cat is in the background helping unfold all the fabric I had previously folded. So I'm gonna take whole pieces of fabric, organize them by color, any scraps go in my scrap bag, any costumes get moved to costume location. I'm starting with this chair, which is the remnants of a lot of 2020 nonsense. Here's some nice tool that I don't remember what I was gonna do with it. I think I was gonna make some sort of petticoat thing. But anyway, so the first thing, an update on my practice, is that there is now a lot of syncretism within it. Syncretism, I've talked about this before. I talked about it in my Sancta Lucia video. Syncretism versus eclecticism. Syncretism works to form two different religious systems into one cohesive whole. So the difference between that and eclecticism is eclecticism doesn't necessarily work to make those whole other than you are the practitioner who practices it eclectically. As an example, worshiping Athena Minerva is a form of syncretism because you, this is impossible to hold, because you are taking the Roman and the Greek aspects and blending them into one. So that is syncretism. Whereas something like honoring Athena and Freya in your practice is eclecticism. Generally, unless you're like syncing Freya with like Aphrodite or something. So that would be eclecticism because you're taking two different systems, but you're not actively working to blend them together. One is not inherently worse than the other. There are elements of eclecticism in my path, which I will get into, but a lot of it is syncretism. I've talked about this a bit where I, you know, I have an altar to Athena Minerva, or I've talked about Lucia Artemis before, where I see Sancta Lucia as an aspect of Artemis, as opposed to her own separate entity. I tend to see Athena as Athena Minerva. Minerva being the aspects of education and knowledge are kind of one of the things that I, I take from that. Now this is not to say that I, like I don't worship Minerva on her own, but I worship her as an aspect of Athena. Does that make sense? This is a nice little corsety thing that I made in the middle of quarantine. As you can tell, it is extremely beat up now because <laughs> I made a lot of it by hand. So I gotta fix that and it's very delicate fabric. It's pretty, but very delicate fabric. So this surprises some people, but I actually incorporate quite a bit of Roman syncretism in my practice, but specifically, my cat is going freaking insane over there. You good, buddy? Specifically, Gallo-Romanism. Gallo-Romanism is the syncretism between practices of the, the Gauls, specifically France, Germany, and parts of England. And when the Romans invaded them, they obviously syncretized a lot of their pantheon together as interpretio or interpretio. Whatever. Romana is kind of this idea of blending the Roman gods with whatever the local gods are. Now there's some controversy around this. I remember when I first entered the witchy discord scene after a really long time away from the witchy community, people were saying that you can't worship Gaulish gods and Roman gods. That's absolutely false. <laughs> In fact, we actually have a surviving temple of Apollo and a Gaul Gaulish deity that's still surviving in Germany today. And the Gauls, while they didn't necessarily consent to having their gods roped in with the Romans, we definitely have evidence of Gaulish people worshiping Gallo-Roman deities. There's also Gallo-Hellenism. That's a topic for another day. There's the Galatians. If you've ever heard of the Galatians in the Bible, the Galateans were Celts who came over to Asia Minor and kind of syncretized the Greek deities and Celtic deities. That's a whole conversation for another day. That's actually on my list of things I've been researching for a very long time. There's some childhood, uh, I don't think this is gonna fit me. 
guess maybe if I banged it. Oh, yikes. These are pretty though, but they definitely aren't gonna fit <laughs> my adult head. Here's some just straight up crinoline. Oh, that's so crunchy. Oh gosh, there's so much of it. Yeah, so Gallo-Romanism, a lot of them were also syncretized with uh, Britonic gods. So those would be gods of the Bretons, specifically various parts of England. So one of those would be Sulis. And actually, Ari the Oak Witch, who I love and has been kind of instrumental a lot in my rebirthing of my practice, revamping of my practice, she talks all about uh, Britonic polytheism, specifically in English folk magic, and it's just one, it's amazing. I, I, wonderful resource. But she talked about various deities, and one of them is Sulis. And Sulis is actually a sun goddess, which is not necessarily as common in Western European countries. Sulis is a solar deity. She was worshipped by the Romano-British as Sulis Minerva. And I just had this light bulb moment when I learned that. And I was like, oh my God, Athena is this guiding deity, literally guiding as the sun. It just like was mind blowing. Wow. <laughs> so I don't fully honor, again, I see all of these as aspects of Athena in the syncretic form. I hope any of this makes sense. One of the deities I've been kind of invoking in, for example, in my Etsy business, which I have been working on starting, getting samples of products, etc. I light a candle or I light incense, incense called the sun, to Sulis Minerva as both this deity of knowledge, Athena as deity of the workers. And for me, Athena, I see, I'm gonna get into this <laughs> a little later. Uh, I see Athena as goddess of seamstresses because obviously they didn't have sewing like we do uh, back then. So she is goddess of the loom. They tend to, uh, that's a, I do plan on making a video on ancient Greek clothing, but that's a whole other story. He just got cut on some of my fabric. He is really, I wish I could turn the camera around, but I'm not wrecking this focus just to show you him. I'm sorry. And I see this, her, this encompassing, this perfect deity for epithets are so important. So I, I should also continue doing what I'm doing here. Epithets are so, so, so important. And people don't really, I mean, that's not true. People do think about it. Like if, you're in the Hellenic polytheist sphere, you are almost 100% aware of epithets, or if not, people will talk about them. But it's so important, right? Like you're not going to talk to Athena the war goddess if you need help with Athena the worker, right? Or you're not gonna talk to Hermes the psychopomp. What you really want is Hermes the master of language, for example. I swear to God, if you knock my camera down, then there is a Brigantina, who is another deity, often it's a war deity, there's a lot of war deities, in Gallo-Roman and Romano-British pantheons and mythology. And she was syncretized with Get, Gary Bort, Minerva, this is very obvious from some images that I will post on the screen, uh, syncretized with Minerva and Tyche Fortuna, which I just did a whole video about. So she's really you know, syncretized with a lot of them. I haven't really looked into her as much. I just more put her on the list because she is a perfect case of syncretism because later on, her name might sound interesting to you, Brigantina. There's also evidence of her perhaps being related to St. Bridget in Irish Catholicism. Uh, so that's interesting, syncretism, awesome. This is some shitty ass fabric. What is this? It's like weird t-shirt fabric. Contrary to what it might seem, t-shirt fabric is ass to sew with. It broke a needle and I've sewn like leather <laughs> and t-shirt fabric broke the needle. It has to do with how it's woven. That's not at all what this channel's about though. Another element of syncretism in my practice is with planetary magic. I did talk about this in my making a shrine to Hermes video in which I talk about how when I do planetary magic invocations or evocations i specifically man this fabric's mesmerizing it's this is called shot silk or shot fabric sometimes you see it as like changeable fabric it's when the warp is in one color and the weft is in another so it looks so the warp is gold in this and the weft is blue so that's why it has this amazing changing color here it's just lovely 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 i'd make everything out of shot silk if it wasn't Makes sense. Here's a good example of, oh, I just covered it. 
but you can see the glue in there. Planetary magic, I talked about how I, you know, will invoke Mercury, Hermes Mercury, right? So the reason for that is Hellenistic age astrology was, I don't want to say more advanced than classical age astrology, but we just have more information on it. And it's like the crux of modern day astrology. And to me, the more that I do any sort of working, which as I've mentioned before, is pretty rare. The, okay, I got a left in my room. You want to come in? Okay, we're gonna put the door open there because he's gonna be annoying. Uh, metallic chiffon, this seems like a good idea. It is not a good idea. The more that I like <laughs> think about doing workings, I pretty much solely do planetary timing. I don't, that's like the most important spell component. The more that I learn about planetary magic and planetary timing, I'm just like, why would I, why would I do anything else? Jupiter is uh, a god of, of wealth and planetary magic is often used for abundance. Why would I do a spell on Saturday, which is Saturn, which is a restricting god or warlike god or god of conflict uh, in planetary magic? Why would I do a spell for abundance on Saturday? Am I, just, I would just set myself up for constriction. I've really gotten into planetary magic. I also blame my co-host Astra from Test Tubes and Cauldrons for getting me into that as well. Because I am still a Hellenic polytheist. I, again, I tend to syncretize these elements with the Greek deities as opposed to the other way around. So for example, I will call on Zeus Jupiter when I'm doing like, so I'll call on the planet of Jupiter as opposed to Jupiter the God. And then when I'm making my offering, I offer to Zeus Jupiter. Hermes Mercury, I do sync pretty tightly together because Hermes Mercury is kind of his own thing that has been worshipped in history, especially Hermes Mercury Thoth. And then Venus Aphrodite, Venus and Aphrodite are very connected in my practice, especially when it comes to planetary magic. I tend to see like Venus as herself as a much slower energy and Aphrodite is a bit clearer. Maybe it's just because I worship Aphrodite but I see Venus as much slower because she's also kind of like the mother of Rome. So she's a little bit more mothering aspects than Aphrodite in my practice. Local syncretism, I keep going out of frame to read my notes. Local syncretism, I honestly, oh my God. <gasps> I have been looking for this shirt two years because we set up this crafting corner in 2020. That's that on ADHD pandemics. Local syncretism, in my opinion, is like so important. And like, that's not to say that you shouldn't, you know, worship or honor or have a praxis with deities. Of course, that would be so hypocritical of me to say, but I really encourage people to get to know their local land or local spirits and local deities as well, or local syncretisms with deities. Wow, this is really yellow gold. I love this gold. I made a very pretty dress out of it. For example, I went camping in Appalachia and I grew up on the outskirts of Appalachia, some places, place my county in Appalachia as well. And the Appalachian mountains, I love. I love the, Jesus, pumpkin. So they're one of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. They are so epic and they call her mother mountain or mountain mama in the case of Take Me Home Country Roads. But yeah, she is called Mountain Mama, and I had this kind of moment with her this past fall where I just had this feeling of Demeter as Mountain Mama and also Demeter as a black bear, which roam those mountains. I mean, people in Appalachian Folk Magic, which I'll talk about, there's a lot of talking to Mama Mountain and petitioning her and whatnot. So for me, there was that moment of seeing her as an aspect of Demeter. That's like also not entirely Demeter, but she's also like very, very local. So like, I don't think I would necessarily be able to work with Mama Mountain here unless I had an aspect of her. Cause she's just so a part of that land. The other one that I've talked about before is Artemis Lucia. I've gone into depth about that. Artemis is winter, guiding, virgin goddess, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I've talked about that. You can check out my video if you want to know my full thoughts on Artemis and Lucia. But that's another example of a syncretic cultural, like syncretizing that with my Swedish heritage. I love this fabric, but I also don't like it because I really don't like 
polyester satin. Mm. It's too shiny. Real silk satin is it's still very shiny, but it's not gaudy. Want to put like another more matte fabric, so you still have like the nice shine, but it doesn't look cheap and weird. So moving aside from syncretism, we are now going to talk about the other aspect of my practice, which is connecting to my personal ancestors and also ancestors of place. So I mentioned Appalachian folk magic. I don't do that much Appalachian folk magic, but Appalachian folk magic does also have elements that are related to New England folk magic, as well as Pennsylvania Dutch folk magic and other types of folk magic because a lot of those populations spread out across the country and they kind of develop with the land around them. So when I do workings or spells, whatever you want to call them, I basically have stopped doing like all any sort of modern witchcraft. A lot of it tends to be specific workings based on Appalachian folk magic or English folk magic, which I will talk about a bit later, but I don't do modern witchy things like energy work, for example. And then I time it with planetary magic. Additionally, a lot of these workings were timed with planetary magic, just farmer's astrology, or timed with various festivals or feast days and whatnot. So they kind of go hand in hand. So I mentioned a bit about, oh my God, it's my kerchief. I, it's my 18th century kerchief. I have been looking for this kerchief for so long and I could have, I thought someone took it. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm bringing that with me tomorrow to work. So anyway, English folk magic, like I said, Ari the Oak Witch has some amazing content on her channel about English folk magic, but I tend to use a lot of that. I've been studying that. I mean, I don't use a lot of it yet. I'm, I'm still kind of in the studying phase. I know it can be, weird because a lot of them call on saints for example or angels and i just think it can be weird in that case to eclectify them like it would just be weird to substitute a saint in for a deity or another entity because in those cases a lot of times they're based on proverbs for example or they're based on a certain saint's feast day. So to change that aspect at that point, I almost feel like you would be better off doing something else, <laughs> changing something else. The one exception would be, I think, certain things like daisy wheels or potropaic symbols, sad or repo squares, because those don't really have, or abracadabra, which is an actual English folk magic spell. If it uses a psalm or it's like, you know, do this on the, first Sunday of Lent, or the, do this on the second Sunday of Advent, it feels weird to then substitute that. That's where there is elements in my practice that are eclectic, because for English folk magic, I tend not to change any of that and syncretize it. I tend to keep it as is, and to me it's more calling upon the powers of ancestors of blood and ancestors of place to guide in the working rather than say calling on the abrahamic god speaking of saints this might surprise quite a number of people but i have actually been getting kind of into workings with saints not super formally like i don't feel like i have a personal relationship with them a lot of that has to do with the people in my life who I do workings with. That is one thing where saints have kind of shown up a bit. I have bought saint candles before and I have petitioned saints before. I don't like lace. It's not that I don't like frilly things. I definitely do. I just like ruffles, fabric ruffles. And I don't like lace very much except for insertion lace. My cat is deeply upset that I have, this is his like little fabric heap in this corner here. And he is deeply upset that I am disrupting it. I talked a bit about this before, that I do have a practice with local spirits and nature spirits. So for that, for example, the local river near me, I have a relationship with that I honor in the Greek way. So I honor that as a river god, for example, mountain mama. In terms of local spirits, 
there are a lot of local spirits here, ancestors of place, ancestors of profession that I honor specifically. So again, I'm a seamstress. This is where Athena Ergane comes in. I see Athena Er I see Athena Ergane, Athena of the seamstresses. Seamstresses have historically been mistreated. And not just historically, are presently mistreated. But especially where I work, there was a lot of bad things that went on for poor young seamstresses who were young girls, who Athena in many ways is a defender of. So I kind of see her with this group of young seamstresses that she protects. My lovely pirate cloak. One of these days I will make it reversible and sew buttons. This is called a cassock. No, not like that kind of cassock. This is a 17th century cassock. So that's what that is. Also for LARP. All right. Hello, it's me again. It's been like <laughs> a couple hours. I took a break to charge the camera, eat some food. And now it's dropped like 20 degrees and it's gonna drop 10 more. So aesthetics are over, it's blanket time. I was just gonna start talking about my mundane life, specifically this channel and kind of like things that pertain to it, I guess. And me as well. Oh, hi, pumpkin. My cat is still wandering around. Maybe one of these days we'll get to see it. So as you might've gathered, from various videos this year has been like one of the hardest years I don't want to say of my life but like it's just been really hard and it's weird because it hasn't been hard for any particular reason like there hasn't been an event that has happened it's just general burnout and melancholy that's just kind of wore away at me. Done with 2022. I'm ready for 2023. I feel like 2023 is going to be a very active year, a year of movement. I've been having a lot of dreams lately. I actually, when I was sitting down to write this video, I like couldn't write anything. Or I just kept writing. I'm going to talk a bit about this later, but I just kept writing things that would fit more in as like short films. I don't know. I was just processing some stuff. I had a, a, a period of time where I was just lucid dreaming, which sounds great. It's not. It sucks. You're like not sleeping at all. And it gets to the point where you literally can't tell what's dream and what's reality because your dreams are so realistic. I had dreams about conversations that would happen in realistic spaces and conversations that sounded realistic enough. And I genuinely could not tell if they had really happened or not. Here he is. Here we are, be ready. Oh, he's purring. But these dreams, I also kind of did some dream divination with them, reached out to some friends who do dream divination or dream interpretation. And they kind of agreed that it signifies a, a need for movement and a desire to move. And if you watched one of my videos, you know that I am planning on moving. So that being said, in order for me to move, rent has unfortunately increased like triple in the city that I live in. So with that being said, I'm looking in 2023 to continue doing Etsy, optimize that. I'm working through a course right now on how to do small business, especially online small business. So I'm hoping to do some of that. This fabric here is one of my favorite fabrics ever. And one of the other things that I'm thinking about doing next year is actually opening a patreon you know i do all of this for free youtube adsense i make about let's say it takes me 60 hours to make one video that's like oh thank you it's like less than a dollar an hour so it's just not sustainable and I've had in the plans to do a patreon since I started my channel and I'm planning on doing fun stuff like I really want to do a newsletter I love newsletters I like sharing about my life a lot of behind the scenes I'll probably share my full scripts for my educational videos which I will talk a bit about later book reviews is the other thing I don't think I'll start doing book reviews on like my primary channel because I read more than just books based on Hellenic polytheism I've read a ton of witchy books many which I have many strong opinions on. I just feel that Patreon is a more open-ended 
place for me to be completely honest. That is something I planned on as soon as I hit 5,000 subscribers, which I am almost there. I'm at like 4.9, but I'm basically there. So I'm probably gonna launch it in early January. So keep your eye out if you wanna subscribe to my Patreon, there'll be probably like a $1 tier to whatever. Speaking of videos, you might have noticed my video content has changed over the past year. When did I last, when did, when was the last time I did an educational video? I know I planned to do one in June for Hera. It didn't happen. I am still planning on doing educational videos. I do enjoy them. However, I, and I've said this before, I never went into YouTube planning to be an educator. I have always wanted to be more of a storyteller. So you might have noticed that some of my videos have little short film-like clips and I actually started filming some meditative short film pieces throughout the year that you'll probably see the footage of that next year once I get my act together. But I really want to do meditations on the gods or meditations on parts of Hellenic polytheism, express them in a way that makes sense to me, which is film. I went to school for new media. Specifically, my focus in new media was transmedia storytelling, which basically means telling stories through multiple platforms, YouTube and film being one of them, as well as websites, graphic design, and all sorts of things like that. So that is where my heart and passion lies. That's not to say, again, I'm not gonna stop doing educational videos because I do enjoy them, but look for videos that have a bit more of story in them. I might include little story pieces in bits about the gods. And also crafting videos. I, as you can tell, am a crafter at heart. I love, love, love crafting. I mean, I'm a professional seamstress and oh God, a fitted sheet. Pro tip from Belle. If you're gonna use any type of sheet, sheets are great to make clothing, you know? There's a reason Ikea started selling fabric is because they realized that seamstresses were just buying their sheets to make fabric out of, so now they just sell them as fabric. Don't use fitted sheets. Trying to make anything from a fitted sheet will be way more trouble than it's worth. You'll thank me later. Or maybe you won't, because you might not do that. Anyway, this is going to my room. I think I measured this when I first got this. 20 something yards, what I'm gonna make out of it. I have no freaking idea. The only thing that historically, I mean, it would be great to make like a 19th century dress because they actually use corduroy, but I hate the 19th century, so that will not be happening. I took this out and now I can't, oh, this is, okay. <laughs> ah, oh my goodness. Um, this is a problem when you're a young seamstress because everyone who's older than you fills your head with this wonderful idea of giving you the fabric that they never used. However, they forget to mention that you will become them and <laughs> you will just be swimming in fabric that you won't use. So, oh my goodness, you're hogging the attention, sir. Um, I don't know what this is or why I thought having this was a good idea. It's in my room. Oh. That's stuck on the, <laughs> stick the landing. Anyway, what the hell am I talking about? I still wanna make some short film type content, but I also am gonna continue to make educational content. I also wanna do some interviews. Mmm, you ever cold? Just wrap yourself in a bunch of vinyl. Do you have any ideas for what I can do with this terrible red vinyl other than put it against my body? Let me know. But yeah, so I'm planning on doing some interviews and whatnot. And I'm hoping to go back to a two video a month schedule. That probably is not gonna happen in January, but I have a lot of time off in January and February. So I'm probably going to start preparing for two videos. And I think that'll be very exciting. I'm, I'm ready to get back in the swing of things. Yeah, you hate that? I hate that too. Like, what do I make out of this? It's not stretchy. It's literally plastic. Maybe I'll bear it with the red bottle. <laughs> make an abominable something. So I was about to say, if you have anything you want to see from me in 2023, let me know. Again, I'm really hoping 
to be more active, not just hoping, like I genuinely think I will be, do you really gotta steal the spotlight right now? I will be more active in 2023. I can't promise that I won't go back down to one video, but I'm hoping that once I launch a Patreon that I will be able to sustain myself. That's part of the reason that these videos kind of had to die down a bit, even in like research and whatnot, is because this doesn't pay my bills. This doesn't, this doesn't, I, I literally, the money that I make from AdSense goes right back into making the video. It's hard to basically be sinking a ton of money into something and not have any return. And obviously I do this out of love. I do this because I want to. If I didn't want to do this, I wouldn't be doing this. Again, Patreon is totally voluntary. All of that's totally voluntary. Regardless of all of that, I will still continue to make videos. Hashtag we live in a society. Well, you don't, sir. You don't have a care in the world. Anyway, I've been very rambly. And I think that about covers it. I hope, you know, your holidays were great. Or at the very least, I hope they were neutral. I hope they weren't too stressful. And if they were stressful, they're over now by the time I post this video. So there's that. I hope you all have a wonderful new year. And I'm wishing you happiness, health, and hope for 2020. So with that, me and Pumpkin bid you adieu. You have no idea what time is. You have no idea what time is.